Welcome ladies and gentlemen. Well, about time to do a DVD Blu-ray updates. Yeah, I know it's been quite crazy for me, Richard, to keep up with basic videos for you guys, but hey, I have my own personal life and I have to enjoy that version instead. But I don't know, I just kind of just basically been hoeing off or basically doing any videos lately or anything to that matter. Just kind of relax and just, you know, just whatever. Just enjoy life and everything else. So, without further ado, we're going to basically start with basic DVD and Blu-ray updates. Now, I had a bunch of basic collection, basic of DVDs and uh, Blu-rays. Well, a few few, few Blu-rays, which is basically one uh, Blu-ray set that I was really looking forward to picking up, and basically just only one basic Blu-ray casing, which is, but I have a ton of basic DVDs, and we're going to probably do with maybe a three parts. Hopefully, and yeah, hopefully we get to this and show another up. So first off, we're going to start off with the basically blockbuster DVDs and Blu-rays. Now, I know for a fact, of course, Blockbuster is probably the big, one of the biggest basic rental video sources of all time, and probably one of the specialist basic rental sources of all time. Well, for basically for me, all time for, for me, but you know, you get the whole point. Uh, but Richard went off of university, actually is now closed. So in the purge of 2013, I did not mind to basically pick up a few basic DVDs and Blu-rays. Now I have only basic one Blu-ray, and that is, of course, originally probably the one things that I wanted to um, get catch on originally because I haven't seen this movie lately. So we're gonna start off with our basically with the DVDs in first. So first up, I did not mind to pass these up because I really want these sets to, of course, be for my production. I don't have episode one or the other basic uh, episodes. And now, of course, the Star Wars DVD sets. Now, these are actually was a little bit pricey for some reason. I think they were both like four ninety five or three ninety five. I couldn't tell the difference. Which I didn't really look at this receipt to be sure if I was paying a little extra of these sets, but. Fortunately, the reason why I want to get them is because, well, I want to require a of my Star Wars uh, movies because, well, of course we're going to have our Star Wars um, 6, no, no, 7 uh, coming in in theaters sometime based in um, 2014 or 2015, something around about that year originally. But the reason why I got these was really that, that they were actually was just only selling these only for about four bucks or three or even basically that. I can't tell really which was the difference between four or three versus but I did not mind passing these up. So I really want to pick them up and actually have them in my collection. I know of course there is a Blu-ray box set of these sets, but the reason why I got the DVDs is because of course it is let's see if I can base it. It is widescreen uh DVD sets and they're both are the contact are basically the same. They're both on widescreen. They do have, of course, a buttload of featurettes. So that's episode two. So we open it up. And we have the lovely, basically, blockbuster casing in their basically drop of form. And we'll go to episode three. I don't know, you can probably, probably see the features, which is like. This is all based on how much the featurettes are basically cool. I don't know if the Blu-ray set has all the featurettes, but I definitely will keep hanging on to the uh, Blu-ray set. I mean, not the Blu-ray set. Uh, DVD sets. Just some quest for, of course, for requisitions. And then we go to, of course, I do like Star Wars Episode Three because it's the first time we ever see Darth Vader to be, you know, being heard of virtually for the first time. And I mean, I haven't really watched much of the Star Wars movies. I do probably remember watching episode four, five, and six, 
And that was during the time when VHS originally came about originally. And then when they had episode one, two, and three, I didn't own the original Mason on, on DVD or on base of the Blu-ray at all. So this is the first time I ever getting them. So yeah, Star Wars stuff. Really awesome. Next up we have of course a well, I guess you could say it's more kind of like my all time favorite cartoons. Um well at least based on more favorite, but um yeah, I don't know. Maybe I saw this picture for just about just a dollar, and I didn't really mind picking it up. Is of course Pants Pictures, the boy named Charlie Brown, uh, feature length film. Now I've been really probably hoping to get some Charlie Brown, well, based on some Peanuts uh, DVDs and Blu-rays. I know when they actually got the holiday Blu-ray set, which is basically for uh, for the tire base of Peanuts um, shorts. But uh, this is a full length, basic feature length film. And it's actually a nice, really bad uh, uh, film version at all. It really starts off with basically Charlie Brown, you know, be the best spelling bee originally based in the class. And now he's basically going to a competition to be other basic kids who are taking the spelling bee, which is kind of really interesting. And I like that originally because, I mean, we do see Charlie Brown fairly so miserably in the shorts. And even basically through the holiday, uh, uh, season, uh, holiday uh, feature like films. That he always can make himself as a failure, but he always come, you know, come and rise up and just basically being the the character we all grow and love and everything else. So yeah, there's not much on features. It just gives you the title of the basic movie itself. And if you want to know, it is a blue, it is a blockbuster set. Um, like I say, blockbuster, they were just closed down. They were just oh, getting there. DVDs to sell for people who want to basically have in their collection, and I thought, why not? I'll buy some version just in case for for just on occasion. So of course, that's of course the peanuts. I am going to probably require the peanuts uh, holidays uh, uh, holidays Blu-rays uh, set along with basically because I know they actually got the actual basic peanuts uh, DVD box sets. But they are kind of really hard to find originally. If I could basically find them, I know basically uh, through Birds and Normal, they do have that version basically of those sets. But the only thing difference is that their price is just way too overrated. Like I say, Birds and Normal and Blockbuster are probably the most conservative basically uh, retail stores that are so pricey. Even then, you get a discount for basically for each basic of item you purchase. So maybe I'll probably pick them up. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Next up, I really want to continue up basically getting my Pokemon uh, collection up. Well, so forth. So far, I haven't really catching up with Pokemon uh, lately, especially with the new animated format of uh, uh, movies that it's put out originally for basically along with basically with the games. But I did sell the set for about two bucks, and that is of course Pokemon Heroes the movie. This is of course the uh, I guess the how do you pronounce the base of these. One of the other base Pokemon from the uh, Indra Legion. Uh, Lapras and Lapras, if I pronounce that name right, the uh, these uh, these two Pokemon here, the uh, whatever you call them. But uh, I really enjoy it. I think the only thing I did not like about this anime movie is because, well, for starters, it's a little bit more kind of less more because if you look at the other three. I mean, this is, of course, a Miramax movie production of Pokemon because when Warner Brothers took the rights of base of Pokemon, they kind of declined from basically doing other more Pokemon movies. So I don't know what it was the uh, what was it about. I guess it was just showing that they were getting rid of basically just basically not have the rights of. It. I mean, you know, I thought the other three Pokemon movies like you know Pokemon the first movie, Pokemon 2000 the movie, Pokemon. Uh, uh, Three, I think they call it. Yeah, Pokemon Three, the movie. I thought that was really well, kind of campy, basically decent uh, Pokemon films to be in theaters because, of course, we all know the first movie came in theaters and really become much more. I guess more really getting into the less popularity because it's with the uh, with the entire fan base and the base with the training cards and the games and all the merchandise that comes with base of Pokemon is there. But of course, uh, Miramax. They just took the rights of basically of, this, uh, of the other Pokemon movies, and they still continue to basically have the rights of base of, of the Pokemon movies. So, yeah. So, in terms of basic special features, I guess I didn't really show the special features of the uh, Star Wars. I'll, I'll get to them later. Okay. In terms of basic features, we have a 20-minute, never-before-seen Pokemon short 
not seen features or on television. Yeah, that's pretty well convinced. On the featurette set, we have, of course, Camp Pikachu Short, the location of Scotland and in Venus, animated stages, characters of Pokemon's Heroes, Pokemon Heroes uh, trivia game. Uh, I also have Dolby Digital Five Point Surround Sound, full screen, uh, one by thirty three one uh, full screen, and you have, of course, the French uh, subtitle, uh, French uh, language track, which is on to here. If you probably cannot see, I don't know how far you can see it, but uh, it's down there. So you have the French track, which is pretty interesting. Uh, I never really liked the Pikachu shorts. Like I said, to be honest, I never really kind of have any base of the Pokemon shorts. I mean, yeah, they, they, they're fine. They're just basically for just having the Pokemon just spend their own time, time, which is just basically do whatever they decide for Pokemon they do. But we don't actually mean to see them talk. I mean, I know in the um, the first movie, in the actual first short, Pokemon, I mean, uh, Pikachu's movie, uh, uh, Pikachu's Vacation is probably the most worst, basically, kind of, the uh, Pokemon, uh, best worst Pikachu short I ever seen. I mean, you have, of course, the Pokedex voice over basically talking while the Pokemon are just, you know, having fun, having a ball, and all that stuff, which is kind of weird, originally. So, yeah. And, of course, I'll go show you the disc itself. Nothing too fancy, I'm sorry about the light. Nothing too fancy, just basically the Super Bowl. Uh, uh, artwork that basically comes from based on the uh, from the base of the DVD case. I mean, not bad artwork, but uh, you know, it's not the best movie, but it has some moments. I mean, I do like the moment when um, I think in in the scene where Ash and Pikachu are just basically race have this kind of uh, competition race that other Pokemon are surfing and I guess just kind of skiing around based of the of the Venice. Uh, uh, location because they actually did this. They actually basically did the uh, uh, location of, of scenery of base of Venice. Um, that actually was pretty nice. Which I like the design of base of how they got Venice right. And that was kind of a nicer to see that versus to see the Pokemon uh, trio basically being going to Venice. So that's pretty nice. That's nice. But you know, it just kind of can't be Pokemon movie. You could go wrong with that. Next up, I've really been wanting to basically pick this up. Well. I actually saw this originally for some quite time. Of course, I actually had the first season of the most popular show originally that all time and that really came on Fox. And lo and behold, I haven't really kept on with other the other uh, season sets. And now, of course, twenty four uh, recalling if I, recall if I pronounce that name right. Uh, yeah, twenty four. The uh, the hit basically uh, uh, Fox uh, show a uh, drama show, cop drama show. Of all time, sorry, basically, Kira. I had to pronounce his, I pronounce his name, Kian Safflane. I had to pronounce it, but you know, he's a very well decent good actor and everything else. Uh, one thing about this, basically, this continue with this uh, two hour uh, feature length event movie is they has they, they, they have two basic DVDs uh, uh, discs. One, you have the, this theatrical, basically, uh, um, footage, well, not natural, but, but theatrical footage. But you also have the director's cut, which is including well, basically the standard cut version, the standard version. You get the standard cut, which is right here. And you're probably wondering, where's the other disc? Well, when I bought this version through Blockbuster, I was making sure that the um, they didn't get must record a bit, must record, must be uh, included, not having the other disc version, because that is the basic purpose. This, this is of course the of course the second disc. But it actually is a full-on, basically, uh, feature, uh, uh, full-on, basically, event because it does go a little bit more longer, and it's the same for basically, basically, the other basically uh, um, disc as well. But this is a two-hour, basically, event versus a movie adaptation, and I really enjoy this kind of uh, this kind of show because, well, the first season I have really gone through original watching the entire basically episodes of the first season. I love to basically pick up the other seasons, but I didn't really quite really get into a basis of the show. I did really like the character. It looked like how Jack Barrow is basically trying to become this federal agent who is trying to keep his, of course, his um, his country to basically be by terrorists. And you know, like like any kind of terrorist uh, comedy or basically decent drama um, terrorist uh, show that involves a basis. This is takes a basis of a basis of, of what. 
you know, actually basically uh, real life terrorists that we have in our real world have basically corporate and everything else. So, not really a bad originally event, not a bad basically feature like film. It is a basically a uh, basic special event, but it is it's a full long basically two hour film. So it actually is not too bad originally. So we have the front cover. Sorry about my light originally. I don't know if you can probably see it. I'm just trying to get it for a minute. And on the back, you have a full on base of features. I don't know if you probably can see it, but full on base of features and stuff like that. And current base of special features, we have the exclusive first look of 24 season 7. Uh, first 17 minutes of basically the premiere episode. You have the standard version featuring over 10 hours, 10 minutes of, not 10 hours, I, always, I wish it was 10 hours, <laughs> 10 minutes of never before seen footage not shown based on television broadcast version, uh, which is basically the uh, first disc. Then you have the making of 24, the redemption featurette. Uh, we have Blood Never Dries, the Child Soldiers in Africa featurette. That's a pretty well decent good featurette which is there, which is because it really shows, of course, the uh, the basically young base of children base of uh, South Africa deal with basically with weaponized weapons uh, of course based with a uh, lot of basic with uh, uh, with violence and destruction of their base the country and it's very well decent good feature right? it's really just uh, kind of calm basically on that version for me then we have of course a commentary exclusive producer and director and actor actor well, uh, episode producer secondary producers and actors of course, uh, can I really can't pronounce his name right? I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, Start with basically with the K and basically everything else. Then you have, um, of course, 24 Season 6, the 4-minute featurette. You know, it's, it's not the best version of that version, but it does have a nice really of this, what happened to Jack Barrow when he got really caught up with basically other things that basically deal with terrorism and, and everything else. So yeah, not too shabby originally. I do enjoy like to pick up the other basic season. I have watched season seven on um, when I was rental basically for rental and I have to say it's far more kind of the same thing which they did in the first season. Because I listened to the commentary and they actually really kinda of captured the, the, the elements of base of the first season. So it's not too bad Richard for what they did Richard for season seven. So um yeah, I'm really hoping, looking forward to pick up the other seasons because I really want to actually watch up the other two, other base and main seasons to follow up base of Jack Bowser. I know they actually, I actually heard from what would be one said they actually going to continue doing the show again from a lot of occasions. I don't know that that's probably a rumor, but if they can really do it again with the same actor with a different promotion based of the uh, different part of the actors, I mean, there's a lot of good uh, cast members. And a lot of basis guest stars was in that in based in this sh in the series, so I didn't really didn't want to basically wait on. I'm gonna try to see if I could probably pick up the other seasons and hopefully do a 24 hour uh, marathon based of this sort of show. Hopefully, and maybe probably just do it. Maybe probably not an exclusive review, but maybe it's just an in depth review about how the show is really convinced. So yeah, 24 hour break edition, awesome. Definitely pick it up. Uh, definitely was probably worth probably like the same price, like two or three dollars or so for basic depends on which you get it. So, yeah, that's it. And we'll go with one Blu-ray. Yes, I got one Blu-ray uh, uh, that I wanted to pick up. And um, you know, I've been hearing from a lot of some decent good reviews of this movie. Um, it's probably maybe kind of the most best Richard cop movie I ever basically seen. And maybe not the best, but probably the most great, one of the most best of the videos, especially because uh, I cannot pronounce his name, last name, but his name is Jack. And that is, of course, End of the Watch. Yes, I finally, finally got a chance to watch this. I've been really wanting to see this movie for some time being. And, well, for a lot of starters, I think what I like about this movie generally is it's not your typical, you know, um, LAPD, uh, um, LAPD movie cop drama. It's a very kind of kind of very good, deep, serious, and very nice, uh, deep and very uh, tone uh, cop drama that most uh, most movies that involves with, most cop movies involves with basically with having the good cop basically turns to the bad cop and everything else. But and here it's not always the good cop and bad cop. It's straightforward based on having these you know young Pacific guys who are trying to. Uh, like of course for Jack, his character is basically is the first time basically being, after being the first of ever being 
uh, the LAP police officer, and all managers go from just basically just robbing, well not robbing, uh, to try to arrest, you know, basically continue to uh, criminals that the LA basically to deal with. It's like so far versus the basis of, not only that, he actually captures all the footage of this, of him and his partner, uh, played by, uh, Michael Panapas, if I pronounce this, uh, this, and like I said, I'm just not good with basic with things. <laughs> yeah, uh, Michael, uh, his character, this guy here, actually, you know, tried to capture all the footage that they captured. Which, even though they actually have a, this gold, uh, how can I say this, this, this weapon? K, uh, AK, AK-41? Yeah, AK-41. Pure gold. And it's so kind of really, it's kind of interesting that seeing this movie, it really kind of drew me basically to watch it because for some reason, I don't know, it just it just kind of drew me to really to, to see it. So for that being said, it was not a bad movie originally. But at the end, I don't want to give away too much of the ending. The ending is so epic. And, but the only thing I hate about the ending is that the scene where basically they were about to basically just, you know, patrolling everything else, you know, right after that scene when he and his partner are just, you know, trying to find the crooks who basically got all this money and basically dealing with these drugs and everything else. And the ending is quite a little bit mitbix, but I don't want to give it too much away because I don't want to spoil people who haven't seen this movie. But the ending, it's quite a little bit, you know, not epic, but really kind of just, you know, up and downs, which is something that's something for, for it. But, you know, it's, for some reason, it's a really good movie. And it's really good, decent, good car drama originally. So, of course, sure for special features, we have, of course, the lead scenes, um, end of the watch, behind the scene featurette, uh, fade the badge, in the streets, woman on watch, um, watch your six hour, watch your six, uh, horn, and a feature commentary by writer and director David Alberm. If I pronounce this Alberm, I don't, I don't, I can't pronounce his name, his last name originally. But the director and writer who did the base of this movie. So that's not too bad originally. I will say that even though for Jack Ripperman and his performance, it's he's pretty much just a young, compared to just actor who plays. The kind of airy, cocky character, just based on man, just in for, for, for adventure and for excitement, and then all of a sudden he just basically knows for fact everything's gonna probably go wrong in his way. <laughs> so yeah, if you see him basically in the salute, um, whatever that movie is, when he basically is a soldier and trying to, to deliver basically of a terrorist bomber, so that's the kind of movie he's written. What what is that movie? I think I don't have it. Yeah, I don't think I have it. I think I actually just sold it based upon time. But I really kind of like this movie, and I think it's kind of nice, Richard, because they really kind of have these wonderful actors, which are basically playing these specific characters, and having the character, the main character, uh, Jack's main character, is capturing all the food, which are basically all things, basically him and his partner deal with crime. It actually is funny bits, basically, on, the, on this movie. I remember in the scene where they actually kind of put whipped cream on the police officer to make him, and he's like, fall asleep, and they're trying to basically put whipped cream on his hand and try to use a feather Richard to, to basically you know tickle his nose and the and then basically uh the police officer is like are you kidding me like it's like really kind of just hilarious i thought that was funny i thought that was just a genius i think you know it was kind of there's some funny moments and there's some heart below moments of this movie so yeah the uh the end of the watch definitely worth it right now okay so basically you want to see with this of course just a standard base, the Blu-ray disc, nothing too fancy. You got the, of course, the logo, everything else in a Blu-ray uh, text color. So, yeah. Nothing more I can say about it. Definitely worth picking it up. So, that is, of course, all the basic blockbuster uh, movies and DVD, oh, I mean, DVDs and Blu-rays uh, movies I've picked up. Uh, not too bad, originally. I have to say... I was going to try to pick up some more for some reason, but never got around to it. I don't know why. I guess because I'm just so busy with, you know, with business, other stuff I want to pick up and go from there originally. And then after that, Star Wars um, 6, no, no, 7, uh, coming in based in theaters sometime based in um, 2014 or 2015. Something around about that year originally. But the reason why I got these was really that, that they were actually was just only selling these only for about four bucks or three or even basically that. I can't tell really which was the difference between four or three versus but 
I did not mind passing these up, so I really want to pick them up and actually have them in my collection. Now, I know, of course, there is a Blu-ray box set of these sets, but the reason why I got the DVDs is because, of course, it is, let's see if I can base it, it is widescreen uh, DVD sets, and they're both are the contact are based of the same. They're both on widescreen. They do have, of course, a buttload of featurettes. So that's episode two. Let me open it up. Then we have the lovely, basically, blockbuster casing in their basically drop of form. And we go to episode three. I don't know, you can probably, probably see the features, which is like. This is all based on how much the featurettes are basically cool. I don't know if the Blu-ray set has all the featurettes, but I definitely will keep hanging on to the uh, Blu-ray set. I mean, not the Blu-ray set. Uh, DVD sets, just a request for, of course, uh, for recommendations. And then we go to, of course, I do like Star Wars Episode Three because I'm going to do with maybe a three parts, hopefully. And yeah, hopefully we get to this and show another up. So first off, we're going to start off with the basically blockbuster DVDs and Blu-rays. Now, I know for a fact, of course, Blockbuster is probably the big, one of the biggest basic rental video stores of all time, and probably one of the specialist basic rental stores of all time. Well, for basically for me, all time for, for me. But, you know, you get the whole point. Uh, but Richard one off the University actually is now closed. So, in the purge of 2013, I did not mind to basically pick up a few basic DVDs and Blu-rays. Now, I have only basically one Blu-ray, and that is, of course, originally probably the one thing that I wanted to uh, get catch on originally, because I haven't seen this movie lately. So, we're going to start off with our, basically, with the DVDs in first. So, first off, I did not mind to pass these up, because I really want these sets to, of course, be for my production. I don't have episode one or the other basic uh, episodes. And now, of course, the Star Wars DVD sets. Now, these are actually was a little bit pricey for some reason. I think they were both like four ninety five or three ninety five. I couldn't tell the difference. Which I didn't really look at this receipt to be sure if I was paying a little extra of these sets, but. Fortunately, the reason why I want to get them is because, well, I want to require a of my Star Wars uh, movies because, well, of course we're going to have our Star It's the first time we ever see Darth Vader to be, you know, being heard of, virtually for the first time. And, I mean, I haven't really watched much of the Star Wars movies. I knew we probably remember watching episode 4, 5, and 6, and that was during the time when VHS originally came about, originally. And then when they had episode 1, 2, and 3, I didn't know the original based on on DVD or on basically the Blu-ray at all, so this is the first time ever getting them. So, yeah, Star Wars stuff, really awesome. Next up, we have, of course, a, well, I guess you could say it's more kind of like my all-time favorite cartoons. Um, well, the least based of more favorite, but, um, yeah, I don't know, maybe, I saw this picture for just about just a dollar, and I didn't really mind picking it up, is, of course, P.S. Pictures. The Boy Named Charlie Brown uh, feature late film. Now, I've been really probably hoping to get some Charlie Brown, well, basically some Peanuts uh, DVDs and Blu-rays. I know when they actually got the holiday Blu-ray set version for, uh, for the entire base of Peanuts um, shorts. But uh, this is a full length basic feature late film, and it's actually a nice version of bad version uh, uh, film version at all. It really starts off with basically Charlie Brown, you know, be the best spelling bee originally based in the class, and now he's basically going to a competition to be other basic kids who are taking the spelling bee, which is kind of really interesting, and I like that originally because, I mean, we do see Charlie Brown failing so miserably in the shorts, and even basically through the holiday, uh, uh, season, uh, holiday uh, feature like films, that he always can make himself as a failure, but he always come, you know, come and rise up and just basically being the, the character we all grow and love and everything else. So, yeah. There's not much on features. It just gives you the title of the base of the movie itself. And if you want to know, it is a, blue, it is a blockbuster set. Um, like I say, blockbuster, they were just closed down. They were just oh, getting their DVDs to sale for people who want to basically have them in their collection. And 
I thought, why not? I'll buy some Rizzo just in case for, for, for just an occasion. So, of course, that is, of course, the peanuts. I am going to probably require the peanuts uh, holidays uh, uh, holidays deep Blu-rays uh, set along with basically, because I know they actually got the actual basic peanuts uh, DVD box sets, but they're kind of really hard to find originally, if I could basically find them. I know basically uh, through Birds of Normal, they do have that version basically of those sets, but the only thing difference is that their price is just way too overrated. Like I say, Birds of Normal and Blockbuster are probably the most conservative basically uh, retail stores that are so pricey, even though you get a discount for basically for each basic of item you purchase. So maybe I'll probably pick them up, maybe I might not, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Next up I really want to continue up basically getting my Pokemon uh collection up. Well Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Well, about time to do a DVD Blu-ray update. Yeah, I know it's been quite crazy for me, Richard, to keep up with basic videos for you guys, but hey, I have my own personal life, and I have to enjoy that, Richard, instead. But, I don't know, I just kind of just basically been holding off for basically doing any videos lately, or anything to that matter. Just kind of relax and just, you know, just whatever. Just enjoy life and everything else. So, without further ado, we're going to basically start with basic DVD and Blu-ray updates. Now, I had a bunch of basic collection, basic of DVDs and uh, Blu-rays. Well, a few, few Blu-rays, which is basically one uh, Blu-ray set that I was really looking forward to picking up, and basically just only one basic Blu-ray casing, but I have a ton of basic DVDs. And we're going to 